let's talk about pivot point so this is the point about which a vessel turns here we need to know only the approximate location we should have some idea about pivot point there is no need to know the exact location so when the vessel is at even keel and stopped the pivot point is going to act approximately at lcg that is longitudinal center of gravity or very close to amidships as there are no forces involved now as the vessel starts making headway the bow is going to strike the waves so what happens there are two forces involved and these are forward momentum of the ship as the ship is moving forward and also longitudinal resistance which is created by water ahead so the pivot point is somewhere here which is uh, around l by 8 and as both the forces are balanced it moves and it settles at l by 4 from forward similarly when the vessel is making a stern way the stern is going to strike the waves so we will have the similar explanation the firstly the pivot point is going to be around l by 8 from aft and then as the vessel gains a stern momentum pivot point is going to shift uh, around l by 4 from aft pivot point is an arbitrary figure arbitrary number it depends on the acceleration shape of hull and speed of the ship so it is important to know the shifting nature of pivot point rather knowing the exact location now let us study one more interesting part that is if the vessel is stopped and tug is pushing the pivot point will not be a midship so in this case uh, tug is pushing like this pivot point is not going to be amidship pivot point will be somewhere aft and the vessel is going to turn like this similarly if the tug starts pushing like this from aft pivot point will be somewhere forward and the vessel will turn like this so let's have the application of this pivot point rather shifting nature of pivot point so if the vessel is stopped and tug is pushing the pivot point will not be at, at amidship and we'll see that there will be maximum turning effect. However, if the vessel starts moving ahead, so pivot point is somewhere here, which is L by 4 from forward and tug is pushing the bow, that time will have minimum turning effect. However, in this case, there will be maximum turning effect. That's why it is important to know the shifting nature of pivot point now vessel at anchor will have pivot point at the anchor itself and vessel is going to swing like this at the anchor point let us discuss effect of trim and list on pivot point so in case of trim the pivot point is going to shift towards the trimmed side so in case here this is the forward trim uh, pivot point is going to shift forward if the trim is aft or trim is by a stern pivot point is going to shift aft similarly in case of list the pivot point is going to shift towards the listed side now let us talk about right handed propeller or rhp as per the convention the right-handed propeller turns clockwise while moving ahead. Now, there is a term called pitch, and pitch is the distance moved by a propeller in one complete revolution. And this pitch depends upon the angle of blades. Well, these are blades, angle of blades, which is fixed, actually, for fixed pitch propeller, FPP. Now, let us discuss some forces which are going to act on propeller. So, suppose this is the water surface. 
then for sake of convenience i am going to show only two blades here so this is upper blade and this is lower blade so what happens now the direction of the rotation of this uh, propeller is suppose this is clockwise so what happens here the upper blade will have less resistance why because the water tends to break up and it will cause aeration now let's talk about the lower blade the lower blade will face more resistance because there is less aeration at greater depth now let's see the effect so we have this force f and here this force f propeller is turning so this force these forces are equal however here the resistance r1 is less and here the resistance r2 at the lower blade is more so we can say r2 is greater than r1 so resultant of these forces will be r is equal to r2 minus r1 the resultant of these forces will act towards right side so let's talk about transverse thrust water force acting on the propeller blade will have longitudinal and earthward shift components so we will talk about earthward shift component the earthward shift component of water force acting on the propeller blade is called transverse thrust now we shall study the effect of transverse thrust while moving ahead or astern so here let's have this diagram and suppose we are moving ahead so as per the convention the propeller is a turning clockwise clockwise right so what happens this helical discharge or we can say the flow of the propeller creates a large pressure on port side well this is port side also more pressure on lower blade we can also compare this with the example of a wheel suppose the wheel is uh, this wheel is connected with the shaft and it is uh, broken from the shaft what will happen the wheel is going to fly in the starboard side so the effect of the propeller helical discharge and all this will be the uh, tendency of astern moving towards starboard since the vessel is moving ahead the pivot point is forward there will be a lever and this lever will have the tendency of the bow to turn to port so we can say while moving ahead bow will tend that is turn to port for right handed propeller well this is very much noticeable in still water and near perfect conditions now let's talk about when the vessel is moving astern so when the vessel is moving astern the propeller is right handed propeller is going to uh, rotate anti clockwise as it's seen here so what happens the helical discharge splits and passes forward towards either side of the hull so the vessel is moving aft now this helical discharge is going to uh, shift on both side so on port quarter this helical discharge will be inclined downward and on the starboard quarter this helical discharge will be directed upward so a substantial force uh, will be created which is capable of swinging the stern to port side swing towards port side or we can say as the wheel breaks from the shaft sh uh, the wheel is going to fly in the port side so it is having a tendency that stern is going to swing towards port side since uh, the pivot point is here as the vessel is moving astern uh, there will be a turning effect and the bow is going to swing towards the starboard so we can say while moving astern bow will cant that is turn to starboard for right hand propeller now we shall also study forces in turns well transverse thrust is a weak force and it all depends on the rpm of propeller if the rpm is increased the thrust can also be increased if the rpm is reduced 
the thrust can also be reduced. Let us have this example. Suppose uh, there is a vessel of 80,000 ton uh, displacement. The shaft horsepower SHP is going to be 20,000 full ahead. It is given. Now, full stern, we take around 50 percent of the full ahead power. So, the full stern power is going to be 10,000 SHP. So, for practical purpose, we take around 5 to 10 percent of the stern power as the transverse thrust. So, 10,000 SHP will give you 1,000 SHP. And assuming that 100 SHP is equal to 1 ton of force, then we have around 10 ton of transfer thrust when the ship is moving aft. Now, you may be wondering what is SHP? SHP is uh, shaft horsepower. SHP is shaft horsepower. So, uh, this is a brakes power which is the engine output. Then it passes through the reduction gear and it reduces. So, shaft horsepower SHP is brake horsepower minus mechanical losses and reduction gear. Now, there will be a DHP delivered horsepower uh, allowing for the mechanical losses of uh, seal and other bearing stuff.